Hey, oh, hey everybody. So I was working on this bike the other day that had a uh, DT Swift's uh, 370 hub, which uh, this particular one uses the uh, like a three paw system instead of the typical DT star ratchet or the double little ratchet rings. You can see the three paws there. But this is a a uh, XD free hub body. Um, so anyway, the bearings were um, doing a hub overhaul, and the bearings were, especially the outer one, was just totally shot. You can see the, that's the end cap there, and then the spacer that goes between the bearings, and then kind of the remnants of the uh, bearings themselves there. Or it looked like the, the inside bearing may have been intact, but um, anyway, so yeah, come to find out uh, there's a crack in the... Uh, the actual free hub body, which I didn't notice this initially, so I just started to uh, pull these broken bearing parts out of there. So basically, that's kind of what I was doing this video is uh, just to sh if you ever encounter this situation, just kind of some tips on how to get these bearings out of here. Um, so yeah, if the if the free hub body wouldn't have been cracked, this would have been a viable repair, but. Um, you know, long story short, at the end we just replaced the complete free hub body. Uh, so typically, what I'll do is just, uh, you know, in this case, I put that little lip of the uh, driver was able to fit in my soft jaws, but this didn't really work because it started to move in the vise. So then I found that a, I think that's a 28 millimeter socket. It fit just in there nice, and you don't want to get too crazy on this because it's an aluminum free hub body so uh, you don't want to hammer on it too hard and get it all distorted where you can't get a damage it and won't be able to get your cassette on or it's not going to function so um, anyway just kind of worked it over like this gives you nice something nice and solid to to uh, hit on but the sometimes you gotta you know I just used a really sharp punch with a sharp edge because it was barely a lip to get any purchase on that uh, the, that outer bearing race, which was the only part left in the free hub body there, so um, basically just alternating, looking at it and uh, making sure it's coming out evenly. You don't want to get it started on one end and just push it out crooked, or it's gonna can bind up in there and in the free hub body and potentially damage it, or it's just gonna get harder to get out if it starts going out crooked. So you want to try to tap it out there just tap it alternating sides whichever sides in there the furthest that's the side you wanna tap on so anyway yeah we got it out there and uh, so yeah so the the other side there's a you can see there's a little c-clip in there that we have to remove first and, and typically on these I'll just use a blind bearing puller like this here and I made another video, I'll put a link to it, where we removed one that wasn't all bagged, the bearings weren't all bagged out like this, so, um, you know, it's a removal and an installation video, which may be helpful if you're doing a similar setup. This one's going to be if you're just replacing a totally bagged out bearing or the complete free hub body, either which way. Um, I mean, you may be wondering how that bearing... Uh, blew itself apart like that in the first place and there's generally a couple ways that this can happen one is to not um, if that through axle is not tight enough and it allows that wheel to get loose in the bike it can cause damage that could cause that free hub body to crack and such and then the other is you know the mountain bikes and you know bikes that get ridden in the off-road or dirt or mud or just whatever they're going to get frequently washed and so sometimes if you shoot uh, spray water directly into it then it can contaminate the bearings and they basically just self disintegrate that way so um, anyway I'm trying to use the blind bearing puller here and it's just not really I can't get a good hold on it so found that just putting a socket straight in there I was able to you know get a good push on the bearing and then the first couple of smacks it just uh, that inner bearing was so destroyed that it just kind of came apart the same way as the other one did so 
um, yeah, that didn't work. So basically, we had to just go to kind of Plan B and get that one out the same way as the uh, the first one, which is you can kind of see some of the blue paint on the edge there from the uh, from the punch. But got that one out. You can see it just kind of hanging out there now. And so then, as I was actually filming, this is when I noticed that the, that free hub body was cracked. You can see that crack there along the inside. Um, right there along the inside where the pawl is so anyway uh, you know at this point you know, I knew I was going to get a new free hub body but I thought I'd go and demonstrate how I generally check to see what size bearing we're going to replace this with so measure the outside diameter of the bearing and then this is the inside of what would have been the inside race of the bearing so we had 24 we're looking about 15 these calipers I have here aren't the most accurate but they're, they'll get you in the ballpark so we've got a five millimeter bearing thickness or width so just by typing all these numbers in um, this is my QBP catalog so they'll give you so it's a 6802 bearing um, you should be able to um, I don't know look that up on the interwebs as well just by typing in the dimensions pretty easy to find what bearing you need but Either which way, just went ahead and replaced the whole free hub body here with the brand new one. Comes with bearings, got the little spacer installed already in the inside. And I'm just going to lube the paws here with some Dumont Tech free hub oil. It's kind of a medium, good all around medium. You know, if I'm medium viscosity, if I'm wanting a quieter ratcheting noise, I may use like a maybe a light grease or some feel wood oil or if I want a louder ratchet sound you can use a lighter oil but that Dumont Tech seems like it's a pretty good um, go between put a little grease on the axle there as well so we got our free hub body on and then we'll put our end cap on and it's uh, that's basically it other than installing the uh, cassette uh, you can put some anti-seize or some grease there on the threads of the uh, of the free hub body and then from there it's just a matter of lay your cassette in there find the get it engaged in the little notches and then you just uh, cinch that thing down you want to tighten it to 40 Newton meters get it on the bike make sure you get that through axle and uh, installed sufficiently tight check it every so often because those things can work loose um, but yeah that's gonna do it for this video got uh, tons of others be sure and subscribe, hit that bell notification button, and uh, yeah, that's going to do it. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time.